I got papped eating a pasty in Tilsley. And I thought, right, this is weird. Dad used to say, for my first game, he said, I'll give you a tenner a goal. I think we won like 10 nil and I scored about nine. So that was it after that, no more tenner a goal. My dad used to take me to a local football club every Saturday uh, where my cousins played and my brother played. And I'd just play at the side of the pitch uh, with the lads literally for hours and hours until dad had to drag me home. I remember getting the ball off the goalkeeper and dribbling for everyone and scoring. I'd just score loads of goals and do loads of skills. Someone said to my dad, you know, your Ella's actually really good. You should take her to a team. That's where I first fell in love with football. Uh, never wanted to to leave the side of the pitch. I always wanted to be down there playing. My first grassroots club was Astley and Tilsley. Absolutely loved it, just playing with the girls, scoring loads of goals, just playing with my friends. My mum and dad, they came to every single game, home and away, and then throughout my career as well, took me up and down the country. But yeah, mum and dad loved it, loved being at the side of the pitch, being my biggest fans, and yeah, just enjoying watching me as much as I enjoyed playing. I think in my first year at Grassroots and playing for Astley and Tilsley, I think I probably won all the awards at the presentation evening. Um, yeah, I scored a lot of goals. Dad used to say, for my first game, he said, I'll give you a tenner a goal. I think we won like 10 nil and I scored about nine. So that was it after that, no more tenner a goal. Yeah, we have a games room in the cellar, but now it's just full of like trophies and my shirts now I keep in there as well. So yeah, there's a trophy cabinet with loads of trophies from over the years that we've kept. For me, I've always loved football, football mad, and that's probably all I ever wanted to do growing up. So when I first went to Manchester United and I was playing for such a big club, I think that's when I really thought like this, this will be amazing if I can continue to do this for the rest of my career. Yeah, I faced quite a few. When I was at City, I turned 18 and usually when you turn 18, you get offered a professional contract and that didn't happen for me. Um, they said I weren't ready and that they didn't want to give me that contract. So that was really tough. I thought it was the end of the world. I thought I was the worst player ever and usually everyone does get offered a contract at 18. But looking back now, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. It made me work even harder. I learned that you don't get everything handed to you on a plate and you've got to work hard for it no matter what. So that's that's what I did, I uh, worked really hard, signed for Manchester United and was offered my first professional contract. It was hard, my international journey when I was younger was quite difficult, I'd be picked for every camp but I would rarely play any minutes, so I think it was quite tough, I still worked hard and I always had that dream of hoping that one day I'd play for the Lionesses until the under 19s when the manager came in, made me captain. And yeah, she really believed in me and played me a lot. And then, yeah, so I was out walking the dog and I had a call off Phil Neville. I spoke to him previously before that he said he'd been watching me and I need to do this and continue doing this. And then he said, I'm going to select you for the next camp. And I just was like, oh, thank you. Like, you don't know what to say when, when you're speaking to the England manager. But as soon as I put the phone down, I rang my dad straight away. And that's when I really thought, wow, like, I hope that I can go on to make my debut for the Lionesses. And, and hopefully that can continue to happen. Oh, I was so nervous. When people first meet me, I'm actually really shy. Like, so for me, it was really difficult out of my comfort zone, despite knowing nearly half of the players there. As a young player, that's all you ever dream of, going to, to the Lionesses and being part of that squad. It was scary and it took me a few days to get into it and find my feet on the grass and get away all those nerves. But I was just so proud of myself that that's all I'd ever wanted. And I finally made it there and it was about what can I do now to stay there and go on to make my debut. Oh, it was an awful day. It was awful. <laughs> Um, everyone was just on edge, like sat around waiting and just twiddling your thumbs. And yeah, finally she got to me and I went in. My palms were sweating, I remember. And I sat down and she said, I want you to be a part of the squad that comes to the Euros with us. And yeah, it was just that big relief, you know, because you don't know what to say in those moments. Like, but yeah, I was just so thankful that she believed in me and that she wanted me to be a part of that. We knew that it was going to be big, um, but we didn't know how big. From the outside, everyone knew how big it was getting, but from the inside and in our little bubble, we had no clue because um, we shut off from the outside world. So when you turned up to games and you seen everyone, it was huge. Um, but then after the tournament, that's when it really hit us that we'd done something massive and we seen all those people who had come to celebrate it with us. That was amazing. Uh, I think for me, personally, it was when I was eating a pasty. I got papped eating a pasty in Tilsley. And I thought, right, this is weird. And then I went to Ibiza, I was in the airport, and loads of people kept coming over to me. And I, I said to my boyfriend, like, why is everyone doing that now? And he was like, Ella, you've just won the Euros. And then I think that is when it really hit me that, wow, we've done something massive here. Yeah, we definitely changed the, the women's game. No, it was difficult when we were younger. It wasn't as accessible as it is now and there wasn't much on the telly for us to watch and 
for me being at Manchester United there was no women's team either so it was hard to really see what what I wanted to be. I didn't really have a female role model growing up at all. I think it's huge for, for those young girls now who are starting their football journey. They can actually see what they can become and they can actually dream and know that, that that dream can come true. I think a lot of us had a lot of dreams when we were younger, whether it could happen, whether it was a possibility or not. So I find it amazing now that those young girls, when I used to be that age, it was hard. And then for those young girls now, they, they can really see it and we can be those role models to them and hopefully get them starting out in their football journey. It's amazing the support that we have for the Lionesses. It's, it's been massive and throughout the Euros, the support that we had was unbelievable. And I think that's really what pushed us over the line in games. Hopefully we can continue growing that and go out to the World Cup and keep growing the game, keep getting as many fans involved and as many people talking about the Lionesses as we can. Yeah, last summer was unbelievable, but now we've got even more fans supporting us. And I think, yeah, the World Cup, will be huge and it's just really exciting for women's football that these international tournaments are coming thick and fast and we can keep putting on a show for all those fans that are supporting us and yeah I think it's going to be amazing and it's going to be it's going to be massive and hopefully we can go out there and just make the nation proud.